approach one minute before takeoff time in the uninhabited desert of White Sands, New Mexico. Tell them to stand by for count off and firing. 59, 58, 57, but to reach this dramatic moment, we're months of construction, checking every detail a thousand times, and a desperate struggle to convince the skeptical, to outwit those who would stop us, to muster up courage to challenge the black, airless void of terror-stricken space. Come back to me, job. Please, come back. 17, 16, 15... All right, take it away! 18, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, fire! We're stuck here. Who got me here? I didn't want to come. You can blame me, Joe. I could have blown my brains out or gone over Niagara Falls in a barrel or found some other decent way to die. The picture you've been reading about in every important national magazine and newspaper. Among them, Life. This week, The New York Times, Popular Science, Seeing Stars, Popular Mechanics, Parade, The New York Daily News. this program to give you a bulletin just received from one of our naval units at sea. A large object traveling at supersonic speed is headed over the North Atlantic toward the east coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Drew Pearson. We bring you this special radio television broadcast in order to give you the very latest information on an amazing phenomenon, the arrival of a space ship in Washington. The Army has taken every precaution to meet any emergency which may develop. Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, I think something is happening. to give you these facts. But if you threaten to extend your violence, this earth of yours will be reduced to a burned out cinder. But he's a robot. Without you, what could he do? There's no limit to what he could do. He could destroy the earth. All vehicles, close in. Let's go. from another world. This is the spot where it was first seen, and these are the first people who saw the thing. How did it get here? Where did it come from? What is it? That thing's alive, sir. I saw it. I shot at it. I hit it. I know it. Nothing happened. It just kept coming at me, making a noise like a cat me. Captain, it was awful. You could have seen those hands and those eyes. Captain, you've got to do something about it. You've got Is it human or inhuman? Earthly or unearthly? Baffling questions, astounding questions. 
that not even the world's greatest scientific minds can answer. Gentlemen, do you realize what we've found? A being from another world as different from us as one pole from the other. If we can only communicate with it. See? What happened to you? In the greenhouse I was working, I couldn't see. Yeah. Then, then a blast of cold air and I heard Olsen scream. Come here. Get in the corner. Now hold this in front of you. Stay by the light switch. 1.9. Needles hit the top. in the stars is a message of doom for this, our world. And now in the most shattering experience the screen has ever given you, Paramount tells what could happen within your lifetime when worlds collide. An astronomer checks and double checks his horrifying discovery. A distant star racing through space toward an inevitable collision with this planet. The United Nations meet in emergency session. All conflicts pale before this threat from another world. If you wait until the danger is visible to the naked eye, it will be too late to escape. High on a mountaintop, an army of scientists work desperately to build this giant rocket, this modern Noah's Ark to carry a few picked survivors of our doomed civilization to a new life on another world, reaching the heights of self-sacrifice, the depths of the animal lust for survival as they fight to be among the few who can be saved. Let's take the ship away from them! Come on! Fighting among themselves fighting against time, as doomsday is upon them. I think all you scientists are crackpots. Nothing is going to happen. When worlds collide, you'll see the most amazing, awe-inspiring scenes ever put on film. The forces of nature unleashed in all their terrifying force. Tremendous tidal waves smashing New York City. The molten fires from the bowels of the earth gushing out to consume our world. from Mars. He saw them land from outer space. He saw them capture innocent people only to destroy. <laughs> Father turned against son. People changed into strange, weird animals. A general of the army becomes a saboteur. Trusted police turned into arsonists. The boy's parents changed into killers. But nobody's getting anywhere out there. Nobody can locate anything. Anybody. The Martians. We've got to start the... Invaders from Mars. Capturing humans at will for their own sinister purposes turning them into diabolical instruments of destruction. <laughs> Invaders from Mars, weird, fantastic beings of a superintelligence, ruling a race of synthetic humans and pitting them against mankind's dream to conquer the universe.
gentlemen, my name is Richard Carlson. I'm sure you'd all like to know something about the new entertainment miracle, Third Dimension. What it is, what it does. Well, the best way I can describe it to you is to tell you that it makes the screen absolutely real and alive. People, objects, landscapes take on a depth and a dimension such as they have in real life. And it has an added quality. Objects actually seem to come out of the screen. So real they almost touch you. Creating the most dramatic impact that the screen has ever known. Coming to an incredible climax when a molten meteoric spaceship from another planet rushes out of the heavens right at you. Of course, these illustrations are only a pale suggestion of the real thing. If it can't be described, it's got to be seen and experienced. And I must add that even without 3D, it came from outer space is a picture that you'll long remember for its blending of science and fiction, for its eerie terror, and for its story of an invasion from another planet that's almost beyond imagining. I can tell you from its size and its appearance, this thing came from outer space. I even have reason to believe that there's some form of life in it. What do you want? What are you doing? Let me see you as you really are. the beginning of the end for the human race. For what men first thought were meteors or the often ridiculed flying saucers are in reality the flaming vanguard of the invasion from Mars. Looks like they're going to come out of that gully pretty soon. We'll have to rush our defenses to be ready when they do. The guard need plenty of reinforcements. We'll get them. Lieutenant, look! They slash across country like scythes, wiping out everything that's trying to get away from them. That explains why communication is cut the moment their machines begin moving. Montreal's blacked out. Nothing more has come through. Same thing that happened on the Pacific Coast. Anything from them yet? No, Mr. Secretary. We've had nothing from San Francisco for over five hours. The nations of the world mobilize their armed might, rushing to defend the Earth against the unknown weapons of the super race from the Red Planet. Is there nothing that can stop the Martian death machines? Guns, tanks, bombs, they're like toys against them. We know now that we can't beat their machines. We've got to beat them. All over the world, human beings cower before the onslaught of these unearthly enemies, whom no one has ever seen. <coughs> Panic that sweeps around the globe as the great masses of mankind flee blindly in a headlong stampede of hysteria. Gentlemen, science has agreed that unless something is done and done quickly, man as the dominant species of life on Earth will be extinct within a year. of the President of the United States. Stay in your homes, I repeat. Stay in your homes. Your personal safety, the safety of the entire city, depends 
upon your full cooperation with the military authorities. Yes, cities, nations, even civilization itself, threatened with annihilation, because in one moment of history-making violence, nature, mad, rampant, wrought its most awesome creation. For born in that swirling inferno of radioactive dust were things so horrible, so terrifying, so hideous, there is no word to describe them. We may be witnesses to a biblical prophecy come true, and thus will be destruction and darkness come up in creation, and the beast shall reign over the earth. Yes, the earth, the skies above and the seas below, infested by swarms of nightmare creatures, crueler, deadlier than the armored giants of prehistoric eras. Here is a wild, headlong flight into terror as the desert erupts with the grim battle for survival. Here is a fear-frenzied moment of suspense as mankind totters before a thing that multiplies faster than it can be killed. Here is a desperate plunge into the black depths of the earth where human courage challenges the brute force, the slashing jaws, the poison fangs that guard the subterranean nest where the beast spawns its terrible progeny. To all units, to all units, condition red, drain 267 is the target area. Repeat, condition red, drain 267 is the target area. We can't take a chance. It might poison the whole city. The two of you are beginning a strange journey. A journey that no Earth people have ever undertaken before. Universal International presents the most startling, the most imaginative and suspenseful science fiction drama ever brought to the screen. You'll marvel at the superior intelligence that unleashes its deadly ray. Dave! Dave! Or can kidnap an airplane in flight. Pulling us up. Prisoners hurtling through endless space, speeding toward the unearthly furies of a planet gone mad. See sights never before dreamed by man. The battle between guided meteors and deadly rays. They're gonna hit us. They're gonna hit us. A planet doomed to destruction. while captive Earth people fight for their lives. It is indeed typical that you Earth people refuse to believe in the superiority of any world but your own. Run, Ruth, run!
yourself as one of the crew of this faster-than-light spaceship of the future, sharing their curiosity to know the unknown, their tension, their readiness for inconceivable adventures. Sir, we're being radar scanned. United Planets Cruiser C-57D, J.J. Adams commanding. Who are you? Morbius of the Bellerophon. Well, Dr. Morbius, my orders are to survey the situation on Altair IV. Commander, if you sat down on this planet, I warn you that I cannot be answerable for the safety of your ship or your crew. When you reach the Forbidden Planet, you will meet Dr. Morbius, played by Walter Pigeon. The Doctor is sole owner of this fabulous world. Anne Francis is his alluring daughter, Alta, who has never seen a young man till she meets Commander Adams, played by talented Leslie Nielsen. Mom, in. Didn't bring my bathing suit. What's a bathing suit? Oh, murder. You will meet a charming character in The Robot, able to produce, on order, ten tons of lead or a slinky evening gown. Always at your service. It must be the loveliest, softest thing you've ever made for me. And fit in all the right places, with lots and lots of star sapphires. Star sapphires take a week to crystallize properly. Would diamonds or emeralds do? You explore all the wonders of a vanished civilization. You travel deep down into the heart of the forbidden planet to discover the incredible marvels of this lost genius race. These magnificent scenes in striking Eastman color stagger the imagination. 20 miles. Look down, gentlemen, are you afraid? 7,800 levels. Yet the wonders of the planet Altair IV conceal a strange and evil force, unknown, irresistible. If you don't, if you won't, if you fail to understand, then the same incredible terror that's menacing me will strike at you! from another world, spawned in the light years of space, unleashed to take over the bodies and souls of the people of our planet, bringing a new dimension in terror to the giant super scope screen. It's whatever intelligence or instinct it is that can govern the forming of human flesh and blood out of thin air is it's fantastically powerful, beyond any comprehension. A cursed, dreadful, malevolent thing was happening to those he loved. It isn't just an ordinary body, is it? I never saw one like it. It looks unused. The sensational star discovery of the view from Poppy's head. And now an undreamed of horror makes her life and love a vortex of fear. Jack! <laughs> oh. Miles, where do they come from? I don't know. Suddenly, while you're asleep, they'll absorb your minds, your memories. I don't want any part of it. You're forgetting something, Miles. What's that? You have no choice. From city to city, an incredible hysterical panic spread. medical precedent for what's happening to you. I, I simply know that you're getting smaller. I want you to stop thinking about us, our marriage. Some awful things might happen. As long as you've got this wedding ring on, you've got me.
This is Orson Welles speaking. I have 45 seconds to tell you about something I think you'll remember the longest day you live. It's about a man named Scott Carey. A few months ago, he was six feet, two inches tall and weighed 190 pounds. Today, he's two inches tall and you can hold him in the palm of your hand. Now he lives in a world where he must fight for his life, a world where a friendly house cat is a predatory monster. Incredible, because it's almost beyond imagining. Incredible, because every hour he gets smaller and smaller. Incredible, because every moment the terror mounts. You gotta come now. Oh, wait a minute, Steve. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm trying to tell you. Now, this thing had killed the doc. Well, what was it? Stop with it, kid. Well, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a mass that keeps getting bigger and bigger. It... Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Because soon, very soon, the most horrifying monster menace ever conceived will be oozing into this theater. Two teenagers see it first, like a falling star from outer space. Boy, that was close. Come on, I want to see if I can find it. An old man finds it, touches it, and this is the shocking result. From then on, there's no stopping the blob as it spreads from town to town. It's indestructible. It's indescribable. Nothing can stop it. This town is in danger. How can it be stopped? Mob hysteria sweeps one city. Before long, the nation, and then the world could fall before the blood-curdling threat of the Bob. Starring Steve McQueen and a cast of exciting young people.